Yeah, hi, I'm Leo Birnbaum. I'm a board member of E.ON SE. I spent a beautiful day today here in the Dolomites climbing together with Thomas Bubendorfer, who has thought a lot. He's a well-known climber and he has thought a lot about climbing and business and management. He's also a well-known corporate speaker. So let's chat a little bit what uh, climbing and business have in common. And Thomas, maybe one question. Where are we and why are we here? Well, we are in the Dolomites. We are close to Cortina d'Ampezzo in Italy, obviously. And uh, we are at the foot of the Cinque Torre. Rock formation, mountain. Because it's, it's really stunning here. I mean, I'm from Austria and we have beautiful mountains, which we are proud of, but the Dolomites are unique. I mean, they are just mind-blowing. Yeah. It's I have a privilege to, to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm half Italian, so I can actually obviously sympathize a little bit with Italy here. And I have to say the, the Dolomites, for me, are impossible to beat. Yes. It's just so beautiful. I agree, yeah, I agree. Maybe before we get into those difficult topics, why climbing actually? Um, I believe, no I don't believe, I'm sure it's the, the most wonderful sport in parentheses. It's not a sport because it's complete. You need from the fingertips to your toes, both hands, both feet. It's not one-sided. It's a mental game. It's a physical game. It has a lot of contemplative elements in it. You know, the approach and, and thinking about it. It's, uh, and 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 this, you know, the the scenery and 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 where we exercise it, where we practice it. I mean, nothing beats it. Uh, you don't need to convince me anyway. No. So on uh, this day, mountains. <laughs> to those who actually would have been here with us, the question would have been useless, yeah, and unnecessary. Yeah. But then maybe let's talk a little bit about risk, because in the end, um, risk is part of our life. Risk is part of business. The risk certainly is part of climbing. What is an acceptable risk? And which risks do you need to take? Uh, which one have you taken in climbing? Well, the new, if you, if you do something new for you, there is always a certain risk factor in it because you don't know if you can. But on the other hand, so that's exciting. It sharpens your senses. It makes you as good as you can be, the element of the new. And the other, on, the, on the other hand, if you don't do something new, it's boring. So how good can you be or will you be if, if you are bored? I mean, it's, it's, it's that simple, that question. If you're a mountain climber, I think the biggest risk you can take is to do simple, to do simple climbs. Mm because they put you to sleep, but gravity doesn't. And, and risk always sits somewhere around the corner, even on an easy mountain. So my advice is for myself and for everybody else who asks me, don't choose easy mountains, <laughs> because they are the really dangerous ones. Uh, I, I think it is necessary to take risks. Um, the question is, do you take them in a conscious and safe way? Do you do all, I mean, are you doing foolish things or are you doing thoughtful stuff, which is new, where you're testing your limits? But the question is, are you, have you thought about what if my assumptions are wrong? What do I do? What is my plan B? What is my fallback? How can I get out of that wall? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if it turns out to be impossible, do I have a way back? Yeah. And I think that's the same in business. We need to take risks but we need to take them in a very conscious, very thoughtful way, <clears throat> in a way which is not foolish, but meaningful. And then I think you're right, it sharpens your senses, it creates a sense of urgency, which then allows you to do stuff that you wouldn't do otherwise. Yeah. I, can, I mean, today we certainly did a tour which is potentially extremely risky, but it was safe, I think, all the way. Yeah, we, we did were a good focused. Job. We were focused. Yeah. We had the right equipment. <clears throat> we were prepared, mentally and physically. And it wasn't that simple. So we thought, oh, it's going to be a, a walk yeah. in the park. No, you know, it was about. Yeah. yeah, it was not. <laughs> uh, no, and you don't want to walk in the park you know, <laughs> in anything in life. I think. Uh, 
But so uh, uh, let's uh, let me just give it a, a different spin. You're giving many speeches to corporates. What is the lesson you think climbing can teach business life? What's the most important thing to you? What comes to you? What is the thing that you choose to tell? I can uh, well. There's many parallels, of course, but the most impressive for me in my whole climbing career, almost 40 years, and and I have gained insights into your world, into the business world for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know that I've been communicating with business people and leaders and exchanging thoughts. Um, when did I make, I, I, I had two big accidents, <clears throat> one 30 years ago and the other one last year. And when did those, how did I behave prior to those accidents? In other words, what was the reason for these accidents? It was two reasons. One, <clears throat> they always happened in a period of great success. Climbing success, business success, and then, and, and success is a very bad teacher because you think you got it made, you know how it works, but you never know how it works. No matter how professional and you are, how, how good you are at what you do, you can be a world champion, you never know everything. But success is like this venom, you know, it, 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 you want more of it, you become yeah. greedy and you, and you let your guard down, you think you got it made. And that's when the shit hits the fan. One, and two, <clears throat> you make mistakes when you're tired. When you don't take calculated, intelligent risks. But when, you, when you're overworked, when you're overtrained, when you're overclimbed, it doesn't matter if, you do, if you're not rested. Mm. So success and fatigue. And of course, if you're tired mentally, I was, when, when I had my accident last year, I was tired mentally, not physically, mm -hmm. because I was fit, but my mind wasn't there. And that's when I made a stupid mistake. And of course, with gravity, not sleeping, mm -hmm. uh, a mistake for a climber is, is a lot more serious immediately than in a business. Mm -hmm. And as a climber, you can't put the blame on anybody because it's you who fall, who falls. You know, it's not your fault. If we're in a team and I fall, it's my fault that I fell. And so I, I meet a lot of people in business and they are not rested. They work too much. And I think that's, that's a big danger. When you're a climber and you face a really challenging climb, that's always a sort of artificial crisis because you're very excited. You don't know how it's going to work out. Am I good enough? You know, all these questions and they really sharpen your, your senses and they bring out your 100% and yeah. sometimes more, you know. But if you know, oh, I'm so good anyways, and pff, you know. But it's, uh, it's true. When you told me yesterday what we're going to do today, I was slightly nervous because yeah. I really didn't know whether I would, you know, make it up in a decent way. Yeah. And uh, so this morning I felt quite nervous waking up, but it was actually probably just the right tension because in the end it worked out fine. And that's a good thing, yeah. yeah. One thing one has to ask oneself, you know, does courage exist without fear? You mm -hmm. know, they're brother and sister in, you know, in, in the German language anyway, mm -hmm. because we have the, the genders, but courage doesn't exist without a little bit of fear or anxiety that comes before it. And who doesn't want to feel, have the feeling, you know, oh, I, I really overcame a certain threshold within myself. And, and how good does that feel? I mean, money can't buy it. You know. uh, it just comes to my mind, uh, focus is something which climbing helps you to gain. Because when you're in a wall, it really doesn't matter, you know, what your diary says and uh, what's yeah. coming and what tomorrow. The only thing that matters is the now. here and now, yeah. yeah? The, you the next there. 20 meters, so yeah. to say, mm -hmm. uh, the next stand. Um, and you just, uh, you, you really focus and concentrate on the, uh, on the thing that is important. That's maybe something that uh, too often in life we do unnecessary, unimportant things. We get distracted and we're not focused. We might not be rested, and on top we might be unfocused, and we might be too successful. And certainly that can be a very dangerous combination. So, Leo, you being an executive, usually people ask me what they can learn from climbing. What can I learn from you about climbing? 
I mean, from uh, from from the business world. Uh, it's a very subjective answer that I can give to you only now. Um, but I think the key point is, um, for me, climbing is about uh, teamwork. Mm -hmm. You can do things together which you just can't do alone. That's true. And I believe, I mean, obviously you can st do stuff free solo, but the likelihood that you can you know, really push the borders is just... It's just lower. Especially in mixed climbing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't do it there. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I think the key about climbing is you need to have absolute faith in your team, in your teammate. Yeah. You cannot accept that there is a mistake being done by him. So if I, if I look at climbing, for me it's all what you said before. It's a, it's a perfect sport. It's a complete sport. It challenges you, but it's also a really, really, really great team effort. And business, in the end, in business, you're only successful if you can build great teams. There are no geniuses out there which can build great companies without great teams. Mm. In the end, it's all about the team. Mm -hmm. And where is the team more essential than when you're two <coughs> in a wall? That's true, but it's, uh, I would think it's much easier to find one good climbing partner that you trust, or maybe a handful. I, I don't even have ten climbing partners that I really do great stuff with, maybe five, you know, but your teams are always so large, so where do you find all these people? Yeah, but you find five guys who each have to find five guys. You build great teams not by finding 500 guys. Okay. You build great teams by finding 20 guys. That's an interesting And approach. if those guys are the right ones, they will build their teams. Right. Right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. I was, uh, the individual is not that important. The team matters more than the individual. Uh -huh. I think the the one the one thing that I have observed is is when you get to an executive position, you tend to think too too much of yourself. Mm -hmm. You think you are indispensable. Nobody can replace you. The world just moves on. If there's, if you, if you would get sick and you would need to stop working, yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean the company would need to continue. Mm -hmm. So, I think the team matters, and the team makes everybody replaceable. But at the same time, the, the team gives to everybody a reason. So this is what I learned from climbing. It's absolute faith and passion. Oh, thanks a lot for this beautiful day, Thomas. Yeah, thank and you. Thanks thank for you, the discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You want the two red t-shirts together. Können wir machen.